All right, all right. Hello there, THP 494 and 598. We are going to dive right into the table comp. We just finished pulling apart a little bit of uh, both replicating and instancing. And we're going to kind of let this be for a little bit. And we're going to scoot on over to a totally different idea. It doesn't hurt us to think about more types of things in this process. All right. So let's go ahead and add a new uh, container here. We'll drop this bad boy right inside here. And we'll dive inside of this container. And we are going to add a table component here to the mix. All right. So this should look pretty uh, familiar, right? Uh, and if you've ever used a table comp, you start to look at it. And at first uh, blush, it looks like it is going to be uh, the bee's knees, the cat's pajamas, the best thing since sliced bread. Oh my good God, I don't even know what to do with myself. I'm so excited. And then invariably you hit a wall where you kind of feel like, well, what the hell do I do with this thing? I don't totally understand how it's working. And it feels a little bit impenetrable to really kind of like dive into. And that is A-OK. -okay. We are going to actually look at how we can start to really understand and pick apart what's going on in here. Because the table comp is, in fact, just like many other components, right? It's got a panel that's associated with it. And it's really good at drawing um, tables and things that are associated with tables. And in fact, we might realize, we might think about the fact that because much of Touch Designer is made out of Touch Designer, uh, you'll recognize that the table comp is actually very familiar and is in fact what builds all of our contextual menus. So any of these things that kind of have pop-up menus that do different kinds of things, this is all built on the table comp idea. So that begins to give you an idea of how that, um, how powerful and how really rich this particular element can be for us and what it can really mean for how we're building interfaces and building things that we interact with. Okay, blah, 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 blah. Let's start to actually build something. So we're gonna feed the table comp with a table that, haha, <laughs> tables into tables. And we're gonna kind of uh, run with this idea that what we might want to actually start with is we might want to start with uh, thinking about how this is a system for recalling presets. So uh, that's certainly not what we have the only thing that we need to do with it, um, but that's a great way for us to start. So let's say that we've got uh, maybe three or four of these. So preset one, two, preset three, preset four. That should be fine for now. Um, and what happens is if we plug this table, right, our table that into our table comp, we should see that lo and behold, the same things that are in this list then populate what we see inside of this table. Now, uh, maybe I don't like this layout. That's A-OK. -okay. We can actually then over in our table, we can see that rows is actually the number of rows, right, divided by two. Let's just get rid of that part. It's just me input rows. And now we've just got a list, right? This looks like something that I want. Excellent. But how do I actually work with this thing? And how do I understand what it's actually doing? Well, the secret to this is really going to be in how we write scripts for what's going on inside of this thing. One of the first things that we might think about, right, that we might want to hold on to or that we might want is I might want to extract from this thing which one of these bad boys I've actually clicked on. I would love to know which one of these corresponding cells I've activated. So let's first look at how we can get that information and then how we can exploit that. So let's dive into the table comp and we can see that it's in fact made up of a bunch of tables. Haha, <laughs> big surprise there. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a new table. And we're going to call this table cell ID, uh, lowercase c, cell ID. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay, so we've got this great thing here. And what I want to think about doing is I would like to change the value of that's inside of this uh, cell, right, this 0, 0 cell, with a corresponding value that um, compares to the cell that I've clicked on. Okay, well, how might I start to think about doing that? Well, in this case, if we drop in a panel chop, we can see at a quick glance, when we open up this thing's interface, and let's take a closer look here, we can see all the things that are lighting up, right? So I've got this cell over information. And in fact, I've got this cell radio ID. Oh yeah, that looks really useful, right? Zero, one, two, three, 
two, three corresponds to these guys. All right, so how could I take advantage of that? Let's use a panel execute. So we're going to drop in a panel execute dot because certainly we want to execute something uh, based on what's happening in our panel. The panel value that we're going to use to activate this is going to be cell radio ID. So when cell radio ID changes, we're going to use value change in this case, we want to run a script. Now we're only going to worry about this value change section down here. So to make things a little bit easier to read, I'm going to go ahead and junk out our other definitions. It's totally up to you if you want to do that or not. I happen to find that it's easier to read this way. Um, but that's also because I know exactly what I want this thing to do. Okay, so inside of this bad boy, let's start to think about what it is that we want it to do. So first off, we want the operator called cell ID, and that our names here match, good. And we would like cell ID uh, and its cell 00, zero right, the address for that cell. I want that to be equal to the panel value that's coming out of this bad boy. And in this case, panel value corresponds to what cell radio ID is. So let's go ahead and open up our panel here. Oh, look at that. That's glorious. Now, if I was worried for some reason uh, about wanting these things to match precisely what was going on over here, I could even do something like this. I could make it panel value plus one. And then it's going to be preset one, two, three, and four. Uh, and that is totally up to you in terms of how you're actually going to do your programming. Excellent. So first things first, I've got this super swanky way now of getting this number. And in fact, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and hook up an out dot. Uh, and lo and behold, and in fact, maybe I want to just like scroll that away down there. And now if I hook up a null, whew, Easy peasy, now I've got a way to actually get out of this particular thing, which one of these bad boys I have clicked on, and that is an awesome first step. Okay, so if I want to think about this instead as being a radio, a set of radio buttons, well, that's also an awesome idea, but how do I do that, right? Because in radio buttons, part of what happens is that the button that I've clicked on has a persistent change that's associated with it, right? So like preset one would stay lit up in a different way from these other tables or from these other cells. So to understand how to do that, we've actually got to take a closer look at what is actually driving this table comp. So if we take a look deep inside here at what's going on, we can see that there's actually a whole set of tables that are defining the behaviors for what's going on here with our table comp. And so we can see here that um, our table default, right? This is defining a bunch of different things for us in terms of what's the field type, what's the font size, or the font, the size, the color, how it's justified. And then we can also see uh, some other instructions about how things change, right? So default is cell default, which happens to be this table right over here. Rollover corresponds to rollover over here. And in fact, if we open up this guy, we're going to notice that rollover, these changes in color, are going to be consistent with what's going on here. Right? Cell select, select, right? So if I click select, aha, that change corresponds to cell select. Cell select rollover, aha. All right, so now we're going to start to like, we've, we're making some headway. So how do we start to actually manipulate that, right? That's really what I want to know. How do I exploit that discovery in order to do something that's interesting or different? Well, to take advantage of that, let's go ahead and add another table. And we're going to use this table to write some instructions. So you'll notice that cell attributes here, which is very cleverly named cell attributes, that's lovely, is in fact in evaluate dot which means that we can plug in a set of rules here into this second input, and that's going to uh, specify what things happen to these different rows. Okay, so what does that mean? Let's write a simple expression. Let's say that I would like this thing to say cell, ay ay ay, cell with two L's, right? Cell, here we can say the expression is cell. For every row, type in cell. Okay, well, I want it to be cell if me.input row 
is not, and we can say is not with exclamation point equals the operator, oops, cell ID, and the uh, element in that operator that's in the zero, zero position. So it's going to be cell as long as it's not matching this number, the input row, right? So said another way, right? So if my input row zero, if zero matches zero, you are going to do something different. In all other cases, you're just going to say cell. All right, what are you going to do if it is, if those things match, else, if it's, if these things match, then make yourself cell on. That's going to be your name. So let's plug that in and let's pull that all apart. Okay. Whoops. Um, cell attributes. Yeah, it should go right there. Preset one. Aha. I made a little error there. Excuse me. There's a night of errors. Okay. So, looking closer at this, right, let's actually just view this bad boy and we'll bring it over here so you can really understand. Yoink. Okay. So, if the input row, right, if zero matches zero, I'm cell on. In all other cases, I'm just cell. That's really what's going on here. Which means, again, if we pull up our table here, right, when these things match, this thing is called cell on. Well, it looks like I have broken my table. Oh, bother. What happened? Well, now we can uh, take a look over here and see that the rules for how we're drawing that table are based off of these guys, right? So again, cell default, cell rollover, cell select. Those are all partially defined by cell. So cell here is listening or uh, pointing at the directions that are embedded inside of this particular table. So let's make a copy of this table and let's name it cell on. And we should see now that right out the gate, everything's working again. Well, what happens if we change a few things, right? So what if in this case, right? So uh, how about the default, right? So we're gonna use cell default, we're gonna copy paste. And we're going to change this so it's cell on default. Let's change some of the values here. So let's maybe make the background color 1. 1 1.0, excuse me. OK. So then we're going to come back to cell on. And we're going to specify that instead of looking at cell default, instead of looking at this table, I want to look at the table cell on default. I want to look at this guy over here. Right, so now the rules about how I draw myself are based on what's going on over here. And in fact, this is maybe like a little too intense. We can make this more like 0 0.5. Okay. So we can see that it's still listening to these other rollover select, select rollover rules. But if we wanted to, we could create a whole separate set of rules for how this behaves when we're clicking on it versus when it's not the one that's selected. So this is our first step in really starting to think about how we can customize our table here, right? And we could really go bananas with how we start to think about how we're customizing these. But this is our first foray into really starting to understand, okay, now that we understand the rules about how this thing is actually made, we can really start to pull apart and experiment with how this thing actually gets drawn. Okay, let's now back out here and let's think about one other thing. Okay, so I've got this great system where now I can click on these. Uh, and I've got this uh, value that I pull out of here, so that's one way that I can actually start to think about uh, how I use this as a switch. But what if I don't want to use it as a switch? What if like my values are buried all sorts of different places all over my network, right? And so, for example, uh, let's think about what happens if we have something like this, right? And I've already gone ahead and uh, made up some examples. So we might have some presets that exist inside of tables. Uh -huh. They might exist inside of storage, but in this case, they exist inside of tables, right? So I've got hue, saturation, and luminosity. 
Uh, and right now, those are all the same, but let's go ahead uh, and give those some different values. So maybe this is like 2, and this is like 0 0.25, and this one is going to be uh, 0 0.4, and this is 1.0, and our luminosity is 0, 0.0. And last but not least, we've got uh, 1.25, a saturation that's uh, 0 0.5, and a luminosity that's 1.0. Okay. Now, so I've got these lovely presets here, and I've got to select that. And I would love a way to change what this select at is looking at based on what's happening here inside of this table. And we might imagine that uh, maybe these things live in the same place, or maybe these live in another base far away in my network, right? Maybe these actually live in their own uh, place uh, that's in a, uh, a portion of my network that's all about setting up the different stored values or the different um, uh, kind of recall values that I want to hold on to and get back to. So how can I start to drive this select with what's going on in this table? Okay. Well, part of this is going to be, again, back down inside of our handy dandy panel script. So let's take a look inside here again and let's revisit this panel execute to think about how we might want to work with this. So first of all let's go ahead and define our select. So let's say that select is equal to the operator that exists dot dot slash above us and is named select1. Great. And while I'm at it what I want to do is I like when I click on one of these buttons to change what I look at with the select. So I want to go ahead and say uh, that my select select dot par, so the parameter parameter called dat, and if I look over here, this guy's parameter, that's the name is dat. I'd like dat to be equal to, and I'm going to create a string here, right? So P for preset, and that corresponds to P right here for preset. So P plus a string, that's my panel value, plus one. Right, and again I'm doing plus one because these guys start at one, one, two, three, four, and my panel values come out as zero, one, two, three, so I need to add one to that. Okay, so if this happens to be the case, what we should end up with now is we should see that as I click on these different presets, that sure enough, it drives what's going on in terms of how I'm selecting. So certainly we could think of this as presets. We might also think about this as layers. We could think about this as uh, how we're working with instanced um, textures, we could think of how we work with this in any number of different ways, right? But now we have tables uh, that we can start to negotiate with that are really pretty sassy uh, and exciting in a bunch of ways. And uh, are fast to draw and have a lot of different interactive elements that are kind of inherently built into them um, and are just a different kind of operator, right? A different kind of comp than our button or our slider. It gives us one more tool in our tool set when we start to think about what are the kind of interface elements that we want to build? What are the interface elements that we want to have available at our fingertips at any given time? All right, so that was all the material we covered last week in class. So hopefully all of this exists as a record now for us to get back to. And um, I can't wait to see you guys in class and talk about all the stuff we're going to do this week. All right. Happy programming, everybody, and I will see you on the flip side.